The following segment on News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM is brought to you by Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group, Remax Results. Good morning, Robin. Good morning. Back for another Saturday morning. Nothing better to do. (laughs) (laughs) Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. That's right. Time is money. Time is money. But, you know, there's a lot of, I guess, Fake news, misinformation, myths going around about just about every topic you can think of. And one of those is real estates and realtors. Correct. I spent a little time this week kind of perusing the Google and coming up with a, a few of the more obvious ones. And, uh, yeah, so I thought I'd run a few past you. And I see, like see. it. <laughs> I'm going to get quizzed on what I know is true and isn't. Quiz time. Quiz time. Okay. You no, know, that's perfect, Andy, because... I'll interrupt and say that one of the main purposes we do this show is to educate the listeners on really what they can and should expect from their realtor. Sure. So. It's good to spread good information. So start the quiz. Okay. (laughs) Agents can withhold information in order to ensure a sale. Well, not if they want to remain agents. <laughs> that would not be a good idea. That's a big no-no in yeah. other words. Yeah, so I guess where that myth comes from is, unfortunately, a lot of buyers have a lack of trust with agents, and it's probably because they haven't built a relationship with that agent or they've heard horror stories. But the truth is we do have fiduci- fiduciary duties as licensed real estate as licensed realtors, actually, and um, certainly withholding information would not be okay. So no. And when you say fiduciary, like you know, it's a term that gets thrown about that, but that means you have to have your. I can go over them with you if you want me to. <laughs> I, I can definitely tell them to. I have them memorized, but I mean, basically, it's just what we owe our clients. So yes, definitely, we have their best interest, and we are held to a standard. Okay. You should set your home price higher than what you expect to sell it for. Oh, that's a really good question. And you know what? A lot of people think that's the truth. And they always say, well, listen, I'd sell for three fifty, dollars so let's start at 400 And then I say, what are you talking about? <laughs> and they say, well, then the people have room to come down, and they feel good, and they got a deal. No, 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 no. The fact of the matter is, in our market right now, if you're looking at the entire Rochester market... I would tell you that the average list price to sale price is probably 101%. I mean, houses are selling for what they're listed for. Now, granted, some of those have been reduced, so maybe they're now selling at that reduced price, but finally that's the sweet spot and they're at the right price. But The moral of the story is when they're priced right, that's where they sell. And that's where you come in, right? That's where we come in. Um, You know, I think we talked about this on a previous segment, but when we are in that like 200 to 255 price range, sometimes we'll even list it just a little bit sly of where it should be so that um, people have a bidding war, right? And then we, and then we get, we get bids for over the asking price. Okay. Yeah, wouldn't recommend going over the <laughs> over the asking over the value. It's not like selling a classic car where you no. shoot for the moon. No. All right. The best agent in town is the one that has all the listings or the most listings. Well, if you ask me that on a day that I have the most <laughs> listings, I'm going to tell you it's the truth. <laughs> no. the The fact of the matter is, is that there are a lot of really good agents. Some happen to be, you know, very um, good at and well-versed in listing houses, but there's a lot of good buyer's agents who don't list houses at all, and they're still very good representatives for the buyer. So in other words, you have people out there who perhaps by design don't want to be all that busy. That's exactly right. Well, not even not all that busy. We have agents on our team, and I know there are agents on other teams that don't list properties at all. They clearly just work with buyers. So you would never find them if you're only looking for the agent with the listings. Sure. So, okay. yeah, so that's definitely not true. All right. This is one that I have heard so many times that I have to have a down payment of 20%, at least 20%. No, 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 no. That's a myth. Yes, that's a big myth. I mean, one of these segments, I'm going to bring in one of my favorite lenders and let her talk about some of the amazing products that are out there. But there are, believe it or not, 0% down loans. 
And those are tied to good credit scores, or we even have several of the banks in town that will do that for doctors, just because they know that a lot of the doctors starting out have a lot of school debt that they're paying for. It takes a long time and a lot of money to become a doctor. And so they'll do 0% down for that. Um, And then there are rural um, housing loans. So if you choose to live in one of the smaller towns in the area, you can get uh, assistance with your down payment. There's a lot of really good programs out there where you have to have not that much. And 3%, 5%, very common. And once again, that's where you come in. That's right. (laughs) Somebody who knows all of this, the intricacies of uh, finding that correct mortgage. Um, Oh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I... I, it's kind of a silly one to even ask, but all real estate agents are the same. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> right. All real estate agents are the same, exactly it was the same. On the <laughs> yeah, false myth, big myth. Um, definitely, you want to do research when you're choosing a real estate agent and you want to make sure you can find someone who you know that's worked for them or at least online, a review of them, interview with them, make sure they're a good fit for you. You know, we've talked about this. The house will just sell itself. Oh, yeah, that's right. Why do we want to pay a realtor? The house is going to sell itself. Everything's going to know. The house might be um, very sellable, and it might sell very quickly because the sellers have taken really good care of it, but it's still always important to have a professional guiding you through the process. Wasn't it true, too, that how, how are the people who are looking for that house to know that your house is on the market unless you're hooked in with a system of people who are selling these things. Well, and what sellers forget is that the buyers are not paying the commission when they're buying a house. So they're going to choose to have somebody professional guiding them through this transaction since it's not costing them, it's costing the seller. And if they go directly to the seller to avoid that cost for the seller, they know that it's to the seller's benefit, not to theirs. How about this one? And this is obviously one that is very common. I've heard it many, many times that all real estate agents make a boatload of money. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Oh, everybody just rolling in the dough. It's a hard job. And, you know, sometimes people say, wow, you make a lot of money. And I will not deny that I make a lot of money, but what I will also tell you is there are a lot of expenses that come with being in the business, and it's one of these jobs where if you work your butt off and you work seven days a week, 12 hours a day, you make more money than if you work you know, three sure. days a week, four hours a day. So you can kind of choose how hard you're going to work and how much money you're going to make, but it doesn't come easy, and I think it comes well-deserved. Um, the best time is to sell. Best time to sell your home is in the summer. And that is going to vary from market to market. If you're trying to sell a cabin on a beautiful lake, yeah, maybe. But, you know, in general, I don't think that's the truth. And in Rochester, it's certainly not the truth. We Our business stays pretty steady year-round. But we do have that little time in the spring where oh yeah we have the, the spring mass rush of the residents we absolutely do so where that's a little quirk for Rochester. and that's for certain houses okay. certain price points so, all right i'm always interested in that because i know with vehicles and boats and things like that it is seasonal right but not necessarily homes so huh. all right all you need to find the right home is a down payment oh no <laughs> it takes a little more than just a down payment <laughs> But um, we can do a whole segment on what you need to buy a home, and I think we do try to cover all of that. Well, it's obviously income. You have income, got to be able to pay for it. Credit, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, ability to get the loan. Sure. And we're just covering some of the myths that are out there. And you know what? This is one of those opportunities. Maybe we can throw this out there. If you, you know, if you have something that you don't understand about the real estate business or a question about the real estate business, Robin's the person to ask and. You can drop us an email during the week, and then perhaps the next Saturday we'll catch up to it and try to answer that during the program. Oh, that'd be fun. We can certainly do that. Okay. Well, you can reach me at andy.brownell at townsquaremedia.com, and I'll be sure to have that on my list of things to ask for the next week. We'll continue with Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group. Remax results right after this on News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM.
Good morning and welcome back. I'm Andy Brownell with Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group, Remax Results. And we've been talking this morning about myths. Myths about the real estate market, real estate business, buying a home, selling a home, you name it. And um, <laughs> there are a lot of them out there. I Googled them and it didn't take long to come up with quite a list. So I'm going to kind of try to run down a few more, Robin, if you don't mind. No, that's fun. I'm doing you, pretty well on this quiz, I think. You being... <laughs> The buyer, me, should never offer the full price. Oh, um, if you don't want to buy a house, then go ahead and write a lowball offer. <laughs> no. The thing is, is that, again, that's going to vary in every market. In our market right now, houses are selling for what they're listed for. So I will get buyers that will come and say, oh, you know, I've heard you should offer 5% less than the listing price. My friend told me to ask for $10,000 off. Well, I'm going to advise that you get that advice from your realtor, who's hopefully me or someone on my team or whoever it is you're working with, but get your advice from a professional. And definitely, like I said, statistics show what the houses have been selling for in this market, and it's 100% of the asking price. So are you going to get that house if you offer low? Probably not. I imagine even in this market, there are properties that are a little bit maybe off the beaten path that have been sitting there for quite a while that maybe Sometimes, maybe with the knowledge of a realtor that you could step in there. Right? Yeah, and you might get you might get a little bit off and you know your agent should know, your agent should know um you know how many days has it been on the market, um how properly priced is it because typically when people are getting money off of a house, what it really comes down to is it was simply overpriced in the beginning. In the beginning. Sure. So had it been priced right, then you would have offered and sold it for the asking price. But because it was overpriced, you know, um, then it's going to sell for less. So then it appears that you got money off. All right. New agents don't have the know-how. Oh, no, that's not true. It's so funny because when I was a brand new agent and I'd have to compete with those seasoned top producing agents that had been in the market for 20 years... They'd get called to a listing appointment. I'd get called to a listing appointment. I had to try to fight for why it was the best idea to use a new agent. You know, So I used to say things like, and I meant it, like, well, they're all a lot busier than I am, and I have a lot more time to dedicate to you. Or, you know, um, I'm going to spend all my weekends here doing an open house for you because you're my only listing and I don't have anybody else. But the truth is, is that, Words can be twisted, and the fact of the matter is there are some really good agents from the day they start, and I feel like if the person is a good listener, is competent, you know, is has retained what they've learned in school, and they learn from the people around them, they can catch on and be really good at what they do really quickly. I've got some agents on my team that have been – in the business um, just a few years, and they are rock stars. So longevity doesn't give you uh, credibility or make you a better agent. As a matter of fact, I know some agents that have been in the business a very long time that have gotten pretty um, lackadaisy about their work, and there's a lot of new agents that I would prefer to work with. And I imagine it's all about the relationship between you, the customer, and the realtor and you know, that trust factor. Absolutely. And I just think if you have a good agent, you have a good agent, and whether they've been in the business one year or 20, um, that's not what makes them a good agent. Okay. We'll stick to the agent's part, that agents will sell their homes more for more than what they'll sell anybody else's homes for. <laughs> okay. So that's <laughs> saying if you and I live next to each other and we both have a similar house, I'm going to sell mine for more money You're than gonna I'm going to sell yours? Sweet deal. No, obviously not. Our job is to tell you what your house is worth. We don't make that number up. We use data. You know, we look at what other houses like yours have sold. We basically do our version of an appraisal when we do our market analysis to tell you what your house is worth. And that's the honest truth, whether it's my house or your house or my parents' house or a stranger's house. It, we just go on the facts. It has nothing to do with who owns the house. That doesn't add value to the price. And you've told me before that when it comes down to the point where you're getting ready to close and that appraisal comes in, that's that's for the bank. 
That's really. right. That's right. It has to verify that the bank has a loan that it has collateral. Right. Because let's say that you find a house that you think is fantastic and you say, I'll give them a half a million dollars for it. And I say, well, Andy, I think the house is only worth four fifty. And you say, I don't care. I want it. I'm going to give them half a million dollars. And you do. And then you're borrowing this money, or at least part of it. So your bank sends the appraiser out and they say, hmm, why is he paying so much? This house is only worth four fifty, and we're only going to appraise it at four fifty, and we're only going to give a loan accordingly. Right. So, you know, it's important to pay what a house is worth. All right. You'll earn back what you spend on renovations in your home. If you make smart renovations, absolutely you will. Okay. Um, so what are the smart renovations, I okay. guess? Okay, so I guess... Um, this could be a whole show, I suppose. Uh, it could be, but I can, in a nutshell, if you are doing kitchens and bathrooms, people really love that, and as long as you're not going over the top. You know, I've had I've already sold a house that was a $200,000 house, and the kitchen was about a... $500,000 house kitchen, you know, and so they really went over the top, made the house sell, but she necessarily didn't get all the money back mm. that she had put in. But it's kitchens and bathrooms. That's that's really important to people. Okay. That's, yeah, you, I suppose the living space, people can just uh, there, relatively inexpensively make it over yeah, the way Yeah, paint, they light to. fixtures, yeah. carpet, that changes those things pretty quickly. Okay, uh, kind of a related topic. Buying a brand new home means... Few repairs in the years down the road. Well, immediately I can imagine that. Um, you know what? That's that is true. There are warranties that come with a brand new home, so you know you know that if anything major goes wrong, you've got that builder warranty behind you. And when a house has all brand new appliances, brand new furnace, brand new water heater, brand new roof, brand new windows, there should be fewer things to worry about. So it's not really a myth. It's not really a myth, but you know what? The other thing is, is people don't realize we are also going to have a lot of expenses that we wouldn't have if we buy an existing home. Like now we have to put window treatments on every window. We have to put in some landscaping. Oh, yeah. And, oh, that's all cheap. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And the builder didn't put gutters, so now we've got to add those. Yeah. And there's not a deck included, so we've got to have – so, I mean, there's, there's still expenses. Oh, yeah. It's good to know what you're in for. All right. Myths about realtors, real estate, buying and selling a home is our topic this morning. I'm with Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group, REMAX Results, and we'll continue the conversation right after this break on News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Good morning. Welcome back. I'm Andy Brownell. I'm with Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group, REMAX Results. And this morning, this Saturday morning, we're covering some of the myths, some of the false information that floats around out there about realtors and real estate business, the marketplace, buying and selling your home. I guess probably one of them out there is you hear, oh, I know you make your money off the commission of the sale, so it seems logical that I could probably save a little money if I tried to sell my home by myself. And you know what? There are actually statistics that prove that houses that are sold for sale by owner typically will sell for 6% less than if they had been listed with a realtor. Really? So if you figure that out and you just happen to have listed your house for 6%, that means in the end you're going to walk away with the same amount of money, only you're probably going to have had a lot less headache, a much smoother transaction, and a much happier buyer <laughs> and seller at the end of the day. So a little bit of help is uh, can go a long way. Okay. I actually know the answer to this one because we covered this in a previous show, but I'm going to throw it out there in case we have new listeners this morning. You don't need a home inspection. Um, I always recommend a home inspection. Legally, you don't need one, but for the safety of you and your family, I feel like it's a great idea to get one. A quick offer means the property is priced too low. Oh, I'm so glad you brought that up because... We talked about the where you should price the house is at the right price, right? So this happens. Someone will say, I want to list my house for $350,000. i will say, well, you know what? I think the honest to God value of your property is three twenty five. dollars I feel like if we list it at three twenty five, we're going to get an offer. We're going to get it sold. If we get our offer in the first few days, we're going to get a full price offer. We could even get into multiple offers. 
okay, with reluctancy, they'll take my advice. And then within 24 hours, we have three offers. And then what do I hear? I knew it. We should have started higher. We priced our house too low. No, we priced your house right. And that's why things are moving along the way they are because the house was priced right. So again, if you're working with a realtor that you trust and you feel is confident, is competent rather, have confidence in them and take their advice. Well, you, use, you often use the term sweet spot yeah. to describe that. So the so, value of the house, where the house, what the house is worth. Yeah, and that's where you come in as well. You right. Have, I would have no clue. I, mean, I could take a stab in the dark and say, yeah, my house should sell for this, but it's just based upon... Ether, I guess. Yeah. If I said to you, hey, Andy, do you have change for a 10? And I gave you a $10 bill. You know how to give me back two fives or a five and five ones because you know what that $10 bill is worth. You don't say, oh, she wants change. So I wonder if that means I can just give her eight bucks. I mean, it's all about knowing the value, knowing what it's worth and pricing it at that spot, the right price. Okay. So along the same lines, the highest price is always the best offer. Oh, well, not necessarily. Sometimes, okay, let's say we're back at the same situation where we have those three offers. Well, one of them might want to close in the middle of August because they're going to move here from another state and they want to stay all summer so their kids can stay at home and get here just in time for school to start. And another one of the offers might be less money, but they want to close in four weeks from now and you're chomping at the bit to get your house sold because the new one that you built is ready to move into, you might be more excited about the terms like the closing date or other terms than yeah. just the price. So it's not just the highest price is always the best offer. And you even brought up to me, and I, it was something I never thought of, uh, that the person who is buying the house could make a difference to me as a seller. Absolutely. I've yeah. got so many years invested in this property it's yeah. m memories and all sorts of things it's and amazing i don't the want it sold to somebody who i think is going to run it into the ground or use it as a rental or um, use it to turn a profit sometimes people get emotionally attached and they think oh this is a young family who's going to raise their family here and we we like the way that feels so yeah there's absolutely no written rule that a seller has to take the highest priced offer and it's not always the one that's the most appealing yeah. to them Okay, when you receive an offer, you should make the buyer wait. Oh, dear God, please no, <laughs> no, no. I, I do go make over. Sweat. <laughs> oh, so I do go over this when I list a house. And, and basically, when you sign a listing agreement, you're agreeing that if all of these terms are being met, you're hereby agreeing to sell your house. So. Someone will list a house and they'll name a price that they want and the terms that they want. And then another agent will write an offer for that price and for those terms. And inevitably, the agent will say, the seller has decided to wait through the weekend to see if they get any more offers. Hmm. You can only sell your house to one person. If you have an offer on the table that meets your needs, it's what you're looking for, it is part of the agreement that time is of the essence. So I think a lot of these sellers are being misguided by realtors. I hate to say it, but I think sometimes they are being advised to wait. And I feel like that is not that is not always your best. Uh, that's not the way to go. Okay. Um, if the home you have is not in great condition, it's, it's going to sit there. Nobody's going to buy it. Well, there are people that just love to buy those kind of houses, and there's something out there for everybody, Andy. Some people like to there's come in. There's a whole in lot of and, TV shows about it. That's yeah. Sure. Well, and I'm <laughs> I am not a fixer upper, so it wouldn't appeal to me. But I do know people that um, we have one gal on our team who loves to buy ugly houses, and she loves to make them beautiful, and she's good at it, and it's her passion. Well, along the same lines, do I have to get my house ready? For sale? Or can I just say, ah, you know, if the, if the house is going to be worth what it's going to be worth? Okay. That's that's another really valid question. And um, the truth is there's no, there's no one answer to every house. So if you have a house that's a um, hot commodity, hard to come by, uh, let's say it's a affordable house in walking distance to St. Mary's, 
if you don't want to clean it up and you don't want to do anything, you're still going to sell it. There's still going to be people fighting over it. But would I recommend that you put it in its absolute best showing condition to get your absolute best offer? I definitely would. Okay. Realtors are just as bad as car salesmen. Don't oh, tell them anything. I hate that. <laughs> First of all, I have a lot of friends who are car salesmen who are really good yes. people. <laughs> so the fact that they have such a bad reputation is just, you know, I think when people think of car salesmen, they think of like the used car salesman that used to be depicted in a movie who was always a con artist, fast talking. I don't think that's really how the car salesmen are. Yeah, I don't think that's really how car <laughs> salesmen are. I think we have some pretty, rep- at least in Rochester, I think we have some pretty darn reputable car salesmen out there. And I definitely can tell you we have some pretty darn reputable realtors out there. So no, I don't think people are going to be... Um, taken by any fast talking, you know, creepy salespeople. I don't think that's what we're dealing with. <laughs> I don't think so either, by the way. Uh, Robin, this has been a lot of fun, but we're out of time for the day. So if somebody wishes to get a hold of you uh, to take advantage of uh, your knowledge and your skills in this uh uh, sector of our economy. They have a house to sell or they want to buy. How do they get a hold of you and well, your team? Well, I would love to help. And you can always feel free to call my cell phone, 507-259-4926, or send me an email at robin at the com. All right, Robin, until next Saturday. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Andy Brownell with Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group, REMAX results on Newstock 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM.